Hey guys, this is me Rachit and welcome to yet another video. Today I will be discussing about my Uber SD2 interview experience. So guys, this is how the structure looks like. There was one phone interview call in which the interviewer from uh, Uber had me on video conference. He like um, told me the question and then I was asked to write the code. We'll come into a bit details a bit later. But then after the phone call was cleared, I was invited for the on-site rounds, which were five in number. Again, they will be discussed later. Then I had one bar raiser round, which is like a really important round, which can decide whether you get hired or not. It, it strongly depended on this round. And then finally, there was the result. So in this case, um, there was this Uber HR. And generally, you know that there are middlemen consultancies. And then I am talking with the companies like Uber or Amazon or other things with a middleman consultancy in between. But in this case, I was directly working with Uber HR. All right, so this is how it looks like. The first phone interview round, it was based on data structure algorithm round. And um, I would say the difficulty level was medium. They really asked simple question. I was able to implement it. I really don't remember the question over here, but I do remember the questions I was asked in on-site rounds because I had written them. And um, so this is how it looks like. Uh, the first question, I mean, the first round had three questions. The first question of the first round looks like this, where we were given a string containing just the characters like brackets, parentheses. And I was asked to find the length of the longest valid parentheses substring. As you can see in the sample input outward, in the first example, the last two characters form a valid string. Uh, I mean, balanced substring. And that the length for the longest one is two. In the second example, the longest one is four, which as you can see, like the opening close and opening close. So this is what uh, this is what the question was, and I think it's quite trivial. You can use simple dynamic programming, which I did. And then the next question in this round was um, based on graphs. It was like uh, n cross n chessboard is given to me, and I have to find the shortest hops which a knight needs to reach from x1 y1, which is its initial location, to a target destination, which is x2 y2. And it was quite simple because um, you just have to use shortest path in unweighted graph by DFS property, which means that when the graph is unweighted, BFS will yield the shortest path. So that's what I did and it was quite easy. Then the last question in this round was that given some length n, find the number of valid balance, I mean valid balance strings which are possible. For example, when n is four, so the length is four, I think there are two balance strings which are possible as you can see, which I have mentioned in the brackets. So again, this is quite an easy problem. Uh, you can solve this with TP, which I did. And then we progress to round two. In round two, um, I was asked that we are given an array of integers. And I was asked to find the maximum value of AI minus AJ plus AK. I mean, the question is in front of you. Do invest some time. Again, I like use a suffix max array. You can call it as a DP solution if you want. But again, it was quite easy. And um, all right, guys, I think uh, the solution for that. I'm not going to discuss that in this particular video. Uh, feel free to comment down if you have any doubts or if you know the solution, just feel free to post that in the comments so that it also uh, benefits the other users, other viewers. I really appreciate that. So guys, after uh, the round two, um, I think everything was going really, really well. The interviewers were also very nice. They did ask me to brief me about my background, which I did like in a good way. and. Everything was going particularly nice. Then entered the round three, which also went good. Um, I was asked a question based on tree, as you can see in the slide below. Uh, so we were given a tree and then we were having some particular node. In this case, the destination node is five. And then we were asked find all the nodes which are at distance D away from the destination node. So in this case, when the node is five and distance is two, so what are the nodes which are at distance two away from five? As you can see in this particular example, we have seven, four, and one. And this was what the question was. Again, it's kind of easy if you are familiar with trees and how you have to implement them in code. And I did really, really well in all the data structures and algorithms based problems. All right, moving on to round four, system design. Uh, okay, so I was asked to design book my show, which I tried really, really my best to do that. And I was also asked to handle concurrency because as you can see for a particular cinema in particular city, for a particular movie, for a particular show, you can see that for a particular seat, there are multiple 
multiple users who are trying to book that and how do you handle concurrency you will you will be using logs but they might be slow so how do you deal with all those things so this was what the question was and i really tried my best to do justice to this particular problem i had been doing a lot of reading on the internet about uh, system design how to tackle those problems and i did have a beautiful story like starting with like really brute force solutions and then slowly and slowly uh, handling scalability and availability kind of thing using sharding and all those things but one thing that i have realized was that the information on internet was scattered though we have a lot of free content it was not up to the mark in terms of the professional sense i mean uh, there was no product which I had used before this interview, uh, which could really enlighten me how to tackle such problems. I was not confident. That's what I try to say. And it's actually very important because uh, when you're applying for SD two rounds, uh, system design is a very necessary skill. And I think that um, you really need professional experience wherein you have actually worked on scaling products. Only then you will have that expertise to tackle these problems. And if you don't have that, uh, you really need some senior developers to coach you on these skills, which I could not really find because there might be a lot of products and which one you have to use because they are paid. But then I did use one product and that was from Educative and it was like really awesome product. They have covered a lot of problems and for every design problem, they go so much into detail. I am I'm like really, really into love with this product. I have and I, and to be honest to use this product it's not like that if you just give it a reading in one go you will be mastering system design you have to constantly read this multiple times so how i did was i went through all the problems twice first just to understand how what are the basic building blocks for system design how they are using it to really build scalable systems and and really i could see a lot of common patterns and it really becomes easy to tackle system design problems this was one of the courses which i really 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 recommend and one of the reasons for that is that they have actually covered into detail an entire range and entire spectrum of system design problems as you can see pacewin instagram dropbox twitter search web crawler again web crawler is something which i was also asked in one of the coding interviews i'm i'll be covering that in a later interview experience um then facebook news feed yelp again like really really great uh resources i would say so uh if, if you do want to use this product i mean i love the product if you really want to use it i would suggest read the material they are offering multiple times so that you can understand the patterns they are using in the system design interviews for scalability and availability i really had wasted a lot of time guys um, i had read so many articles like there is high scalability.com but the problem is that it's really difficult and i think when you're applying for sg2 you already have a current job it's really difficult to process all these things and build a story about how you have to tackle such problems and I really like this product. That's what I want to say. And the risk is really huge because SD2 salaries are really almost double as compared to SD1. Anyways, guys, um, if you do want to use this product, check the video description for the link. I think it, it was super good. And one thing that I can do from my side is that I really negotiated with them to get this small 10% discount for the first 100 users. They already have uh, an offer for Indian users. Like uh, you will get 37% off. So you will get the product for 49 US dollars and then you also have free preview lessons as well as 30 day returns. So check the video description in the link and you can al already see the reviews are pretty great. I'm, I'm again telling that I have also used this product. I felt like it was super good. Again guys moving on to the Uber interview story. The round 5 was hiring manager and this was one of the rounds which did not go really well for me. Um, they really digged into questions. I mean, when I say they, the hiring manager really digged into questions like, why are you looking for a change? And uh, it does depend on manager to manager, but I did feel a bit uncomfortable because I tried to maintain a positive atmosphere. I was trying to smile, but the manager kept a poker face throughout with no smile. Uh, this did give me a bit of negative vibes. I did become uncomfortable. But I mean, uh, one thing that I feel is that you should be really, really prepared with your experience stories as well as inter interview stories, like what you have to share with them. So that's what I learned from that. Again, um, this was like the end of my on-site interviews. Then after a few days, they told that there is a bar is around, which could not happen on that day. And I said that, okay, it means that they are still interested in me. I, I really was hoping that the hiring manager round may have went negative. But once I received this call, I thought that they are still looking into me. So that's a good sign. 
Um, again, this round was system design round and I did exceptionally well this time. And even I discussed the low level design for the problem they asked and I came up with the classes and interfaces and how they will be implementing that and how they will be basically interacting with each other. So this went really, really well. All right, guys, let's talk about the offer. So uh, I did not actually receive an offer from Uber for SG2 role. The HR called me and said, I, so HR called me, they did not send me a mail, but they called me and said that your system design did not went good. And then the hiring manager also had some concerns, but the bar raiser manager kept on insisting to hire me. So this was what uh, the HR told me. And then I asked for the written feedback, like just send me a mail about uh, all these things that you have shared with me. Uh, I, I was a bit surprised because for the system design round, though I really did not do exceptionally well, but the interviewer while going said me that I really, really did uh, like really good. I don't know why did he tell that at that point of time because okay I don't know why did he why would he tell that uh, then hiring manager I could sense that like yeah he might have some concerns so that's fine uh, but one thing that was really astonishing for me was that the recruiter completely stopped responding to my mails when I asked to share the feedback in Britain so maybe he shared too much of information in starting uh, on the phone conversation and he was not quite comfortable in writing that up in mail because it might be controversial or something but i did expect at least a, like one single reply about what's 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 going on so yeah that didn't happen and that did upset me a little bit but okay what did i learn from this interview so i understood that it's really really important to invest in system design if you are targeting for sg2 role if you are targeting sg1 role it's fine the free stuff on internet can really do work for you and then the other thing is that be prepared with your experience stories like you need to back up your um, technical skills or your cultural skills or your behavioral skills by some of the work that you have done some stories for you should speak for these qualities and that needs you to invest time so that's one thing i learned uh, another thing that i learned for system design was that you really need to be familiar with all different kinds of um, questions that you can expect and i think uh, educative website did a really good job over there so again check the video description in the link and then one of the important lessons that I learned is that hiring is professional while emotions are not. HR might not care about you as an individual. They might not reply to you. They will not like be totally serious with you. They might mess up things because they have a lot to do on their plate. I'm not sure why this happens, but yeah, this can happen and this does happen. You can expect that they might stop replying to your mails. They will keep you on hold because it's business and they have to find other good options as well because too many developers are in the pipeline and they want the best at the lowest cost so it's strictly professional so don't get your emotions mixed into this and then focus on your skills a lot that's the most important tip that i can give you they will eventually get you where you dream and then don't judge a company by one incident because because we all are people we all make mistakes so if you have a bad experience with some firm it's okay don't don't really judge that this company is like this because it's important to have hope and patience at the same time all right guys that's all i had for this video i hope this was a bit useful um if you want to reach me at linkedin for anything like interview prep workshops in your university or speaker in technical events to let me know also you can basically visit my personal portfolio website which is https rachitiatr.com also guys um, feel free to check the coding interview section on my personal portfolio website I, over there i have the things that i recommend personally for coding interviews and that's that's all guys watch more of my interview experience and i will see you next time